Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase, the show where we take your questions from YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow, wherever you send them into us, and we answer them right here. And we bring people from all over Firebase, like Annie Ryan from UX, to answer your questions. And Annie, fun fact, knows how to make a sconet. What is a sconet, Annie? A sconet is a mix between a scone and a donut. It's like a... It's like a... Well, you, I guess you can really make them any shape, but I like to make like little sconet holes. Ooh, pop, pop them right in your mouth. Did you, did you bring any? I'm so, I'm so sorry. All right, well, I guess we'll just answer some questions then. Our first question comes from Joey, and he says, I want to ship an update to my app, but I'm unsure if users are going to respond well to it. What should I do? A scenario that I think of would be, so you're building a music app, and some users, they like to crossfade in between songs, for others like just like to jump directly to the next song. So how would you test both of those concepts? I'm a UX designer, so I participate in research sessions a lot here. Um, and I think like what I would do is, well, first for any research session you have, you gather users, right? Um, and then the next thing you do is test both concepts in front of them. And then once you have that, like you then gather your data. What do we do after that? We analyze our data. Um, and then we present the findings to the rest of our team, you know, make some product recommendations. And if your results are inconclusive, which, you know, sometimes happens, um, I think that's the time to make a judgment call because once you ship, you're going to get feedback from your end users and that can help inform you to what to do next from there. Great question, Joey. Hey, Annie. Hey, David. Next, next question. question. This next question comes from Mike on Twitter. And Mike asks, hey, friends at hashtag Ask Firebase and ElectronJS, I'm getting this warning when building an Electron Angular 8 app with Firebase. Any tips on how to best resolve it? Well, for those of you who don't know what Electron JS is, it's this amazing tool for building desktop applications. So you get this Chrome uh, front end or Chrome, Chromium based front end, and you kind of get Node also working within that environment. And what's really amazing about it is I can make Node calls in the browser. But how that can make things confusing is, is that Firebase ships multiple uh, bundles for different environments in our package.json. So the main field uh, is, indicates that we're going to use a common JS and a node environment. And then the browser field is what you know, the browser likes to understand. And since now both of them work, things can get kind of confusing. So the tips for getting this resolved is that you either use just basic script tags, so things are dangled off the window, so window.firebase, and then we'll know that that is a browser environment. But if you're using a, a module bundler, you want to make sure uh, that when your code is built and transpiled out, that there aren't any require functions. Because if there's a require function, we're going to assume that you're using a common JS node approach, and then you'll see that warning. So make sure that there's no requires and that everything you know, looks as if it's coming from a browser-based environment. Great question, Mike. Hey, David. Hey, Annie. Let's play a game called What's the Difference? What's the difference between Cloud Functions and Cloud Run? Cloud Functions and Cloud Run are both serverless tools uh, with integrations between Google Cloud and Firebase. So Cloud Functions uh, makes it very simple to trigger server code based on events. So if a document is updated or created or deleted in Firestore, will trigger uh, an action for you to maybe delete other nodes or to update nodes in other places. Or when a user creates an account, you can go and send them a welcome email. And all of the runtime and everything is managed for you. So if you just want to write a few lines of simple server code, we make it really easy. Whereas Cloud Run is well, also serverless, but it's all based on containers. So if you are familiar with Docker, you can build, or create your own Docker container, build it, and then when you send it up to Cloud Run, it will serverlessly be triggered based upon an event. Cloud Run, as of today, only supports HTTP events. So if you call a method, it'll run your container. 
but there are more events coming in the future. So the main difference is Cloud Functions is really managed for you, but it's super duper easy to get mm -hmm. started. And Cloud Run, you have a lot more flexibility, but there's a bit more you have to do to get it running, but you can use all sorts of programming languages and basically whatever you want. Hey, Annie, mm -hmm. what's the difference between UX and UI design? Well, David, let me tell you. These are two acronyms, right? UX is user experience, where UI is user interface. And so I'm a UX designer. I do a little bit of both, though. Um, UX deals more with the end-to-end -end experience that your users, your end users, um, have with your application, whatever product that you're building. Whereas UI is more of like, like it says, the interface itself. And UI designers deal with, um, you know, visual language, componentry, how users like respond to the interface that you put in front of them. Hey David, what's the difference between Firebase Performance Monitoring and Lighthouse? Firebase and Performance Monitoring and Lighthouse are both tools for monitoring the performance of your web app and two tools that are also made here at Google. But the difference is in how you use them. So Lighthouse is how we refer to as in the lab testing. It has a very set uh, list of conditions and audits that it runs and tells you how your app performed. And this happens either through Chrome or Chrome extension or some type of Lighthouse runner. And it'll tell you whether your app was accessible, how fast it loaded on this certain connection, when all these first paints and first contentful paint and really helpful metrics happen. But it happens as a sort as a lab test. Whereas Firebase Performance Monitoring is a script that you include in your app, much like Google Analytics, and it beacons the performance data from the app to Firebase Performance Monitoring's dashboard, and it displays to you what actually happened in the wild. So you can see your performance data for users across different countries and different devices and browsers, and you can really drill in to see where problems are lying in the wild. And so the way that people's workflow usually goes is that you use Lighthouse while you're developing to catch any issues that might happen before you deploy. And then you use performance monitoring to monitor that performance over time to make sure that you're getting the proper performance you need. So that is all for today for this episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. Thank you so much for sending in your questions and thank you so much to Annie Ryan for coming on and helping us answer them. And if you have a Firebase question, make sure to go onto YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow and tag it with Hashtag Ask Firebase and we will answer it on this show. If you liked this episode, make sure to go down and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for all the new episodes that we're gonna be releasing to the YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for stopping by and I will see you on the very next episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. Next question.